<laughs> All right, everybody. Uh, uh, welcome to Blockchain Week for uh, day number two. So, government grade blockchain. So, here is the agenda, what I plan to do. I'd like to explain what do I mean by government grade blockchain. And then I'd like to say why I think it is important to share with you this. And then also to share particularly my experience when I talk about uh, uh, public officials, about what they really want and strange angles they want from our technology. All right. Now, let's uh, agree that uh, blockchain is an amazing technology, right? And as uh, enjoying amazing adoption from uh, the early adopters to big finance now, they are coming on the blockchain. But perhaps it's fair to say that governments are not quite there yet the way we want it. So it is a fair question, why? So we can be dismissive, right? Ah, governments, they are always late, oh, they are too cautious, etc., etc., etc. But could it be, might be, may perhaps be the case that blockchain is not quite government grade yet? Okay. Here is uh, going to be our uh, hero today, is uh, Mr. Magellan. Remember, this is the guy who first to circumnavigate the globe. He started from Spain, he went down South America, through the Magellan Strait. He discovered this new ocean, which he called the Pacific. Some of his crew felt that in three days they would be in China. Well, they were wrong. Why? Because they didn't have any maps. Right? He was going really towards the unknown with no maps at all. And so he set sail in uh, September 1519 with uh, five ships and 270 crew. Well, it took three years to come back home. Only one ship made it, and only 19 of the crew survived. 7% rate of survival. Magellan himself did not survive. Yet uh, we think a little bit, you know, some sympathy. We cannot but sim sympathy for the guy. Why? Because we are blockchainers. So we love explorations as much as uh, he did. We like adventure, and we are not afraid to see risk in the eye. However, and that is a fact, not everybody's like us, right? And <laughs> somehow, and for good reasons too, we are a host now of France. France has been a nation for many centuries and plans to be a nation for many more centuries. And if you accept 7% survival on anything you do, you don't last a few centuries, okay? So we had some, sometimes governments won't and necessarily do slow down things a little bit. So governments, however, it is important to realize that they have legitimate objectives. What is more important to realize is what their objectives, they are actually achievable today. And we actually very often ignore them, even though we have the technology to address them successfully. I'd like here to share with you just a few examples. An example, number one, is the you know, quintessential phenomenon of a soft fork, right? All of a sudden, the chain splits temporarily. But what happens during such a split? Well, there is a temporary, a temporary ambiguity, ambiguity. So some digital asset may belong to you in some branch and to you in another branch. So what? Who cares, says Magellan, the guy who accepts 7% probability of survival? Sure, from his perspective, you know, waiting a few, uh, a few minutes to see that who is really the real owner of a digital asset doesn't matter. Doesn't matter to Mr. Magellan, but the governments care. Because governments, to keep nations united, they need to have a certain glue, certain fundamental pillars. And one of these pillars, a legal pillar, is certainty of the law. That is a legal pillar in any government. And another 
pillar in finance is certainty of ownership. You cannot run a finance world in which for a moment is even clear is my asset becomes yours or yours becomes mine. This confusion is not as welcome. So, and what is the, the notion? Forkless chains. By the way, forkless chains, how do you get that? You abandon the traditional consensus, elongated the longest chain or at one branch at random if there are two equally long, and you do actually Byzantine agreement on every block you produce. Footnote, and by the way, some chains succeed in doing this at scale. So here is how it goes. Assume that you are in one of these chains, you have blocks of B1, B2, BK, somebody, maybe you, propose another block, is not appended yet we have to reach a Byzantine agreement on it. Once it's done, we can propose another block, reach a Byzantine agreement on it, and so on and so forth. This way, there is no split, there is not even temporary ambiguity. And one good thing which you have better than uh, the great explorers of the 1500s is that uh, we actually, we have GitHubs and we share our technology with everybody else. You know what, in this uh, circumnavigation, uh, when uh, these ships come back full of knowledge, full of charts, the most dangerous part was coming back home. Because if you were at the last <laughs> hundreds of miles, Portuguese, you were assaulted by the Spaniards. If you were Spaniard, you were assaulted by Portuguese. Everybody wanted your knowledge. But we blockchainers, we passed that. We actually have, we donate our technology, everybody's welcome to use it. Therefore, why don't we do just that? and get the forkless chains for everybody. And that's what, in my opinion, is what the government wants. Another one, government cares about fairness. Consider the quintessential problem of asset swap, which is the bread and butter of trade. You have an asset that I want, and I have an asset, maybe money, that you want, and we want to swap them. How do we do it? There is a public official, and not a republic, somebody with power, which convenes the two parts. And nobody leaves the room unless the transaction is complete and is not going to be a hang transaction. Either we complete together or we don't complete. Well, how do we do it? Ash time locks? Well, they knock over a very bad approximation of whatever happens with a, a trusted official in the middle helping us, right? Because uh, I can give you my house but I have five minutes, if you give him the money, now his transaction is complete. But if you don't give him the money, I can post in the blockchain another transaction in which I retract my asset. What is the problem? If I give him my house, now I have five minutes, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, and you give him the money, and somehow I am the object of a denial, massive denial of service attack. My communication channel is clogged. I cannot hear anything, and I cannot post any message. After five minutes of clocking and ticking, the house is now yours, and I cannot call it back. OK. Well, why don't we do it? We put an escrow contract, and I give my house in escrow, the title of my house. You give them my money, and the escrow contract knows very well that once both are there, then it's going to distribute to both of us. But the question is, who wants to go first? How about you put the money first in the smart contract, if the chain, for whatever reason, Holds, stops, coughs up. What is going to happen after <laughs> to the king? Who wants to go first is a very big problem. So the party who goes first has a small strategic disadvantage. Who cares? Of course, if you're willing to gamble your life with those odds, you know, going first in a transaction, <laughs> it's a nonsense. But governments do. Fairness is very important. And so, can you imagine that a government, any government, says, you know, welcome to the national asset swapping platform. And by the way, I want you, citizen, to be aware that the first to go is at a disadvantage. Have you, you got it, right? Enjoy the platform. Sign your caring government. No, that's not the way they work. Fairness to the hilt is important. That's why we have these complex, orchestrated, in-person meetings. Nonetheless, we can have the same block smart contracts. What does that mean? What the world says? It is not that I go first and put some 
transaction on a block, and then you go second and you post the transaction after me, et cetera, et cetera. But that means that my transaction, by which I give the house, and your transaction, which you give the house, find together and must be together in the same block for the block to be valid. Because if only my house, and I mentioned that you have to give the money, is on the block, is an invalid block. Cannot get on the chain. And vice versa for you. So these are a better approximation of fairness. And guess what? They are again achievable in some chains. Your guess is as good as mine. And you can download it and implement it too. Everybody, I think, that, that wants to address governmental problem, fairness, is going to be a major concern. And I'd like to mention a third one, because I have another, another nine minutes. And it's quantum resilient chains. So what is the problem? The problem is that quantum computers may, at some point in the future, scale. Right now, I can factor 15, three times five by quantum computer, but they are not there yet. So what does that mean? That I have to get wet before it rains? That I should take my key and get a much more cumbersome, a longer key that is a quantum resilient to sign transaction? No. Maybe I have time to do it. When a quantum computer can factor numbers, say, or 10 digits, I start getting uh, pay attention, 20 digits, I start getting worry, 50 digits, and then I switch. But right now, why should I switch against to be protected by quantum computers at scale that are not quite there yet? But what is the problem? Our chain will be around in 10 years, 20 years, 50 years, whatever it takes the quantum computer to scale. And those transactions had to be secure. Assume that you bought the Colosseum from me a year ago, or right now, at a very good price. And you, don't, you love it so much, you don't trade it, you don't sell it. When quantum computer comes, then you may no longer be the owner of a Colosseum. That you don't want. So it's not the problem to secure the the digital signature by which in this minute, unless in this minute there are quantum computers, they are okay. But to secure the ownership of, of, of assets when the chain is going to be around to be attacked by the future quantum computers. So what do we want really is our goal is to secure now the chain, because the chain lasts more than us, right? It lasts the human forever, 100 years, 200 years, etc. against the future attack. That is actually a goal. And by the way, it is also achievable. Stay tuned. So, once more, I think, uh, why not really improve these chains and making them really government grade? So, by the way, I have no time for an example four, an example five, you know, we have to worry about AI and blockchain and thing and thing. But let me say a prediction, which uh, I stand by it. That government grades blockchain requirements will grow with time. Like in Italy, there is a saying that they say, appetite grows while eating. So you give me fairness, oh, great. How about forklifts? Oh, well, it's good too, but I want more and I want more. That's the human nature, right? So this will, will, will happen. But my take is that governments are very rational actor with just different objective functions than we individual blockchainers have. And they challenge us to develop more demanding blockchain. So let's embrace the challenge rather than pushing back on it. So, and I'd like to mention uh, uh, the famous reason that Enzo Ferrari, he was a man of the past. He built with passion internal combustion engines. But he was also a man of the future. Right now, you would build maybe electric cars. And maybe you would build uh, personal flying saucers later. But the principle stand well. He said, build race car to build better cars. Why do we toil to push the edge of the envelope? Why we insist on doing what is hard? Because we want to do better what is easy. By doing government grade chain, we are going to make any chain better. And we should. And I'd like to leave you with this image. That is uh, a bridge, a Roman bridge in southern France, Le Pont du Gard. 
and this is quintessential governmental infrastructure. This bridge has been in working for over two millennia. And until 2005, trucks and cars were allowed to cross it, so robust it was. Well, I believe that the government-grade blockchain is going to be as useful, as powerful, and as beautiful as any other piece of physical or digital infrastructure we shall ever build. Thank you.